Okay, we're here looking at the control panel which is relevant to each model available in the series. Uh, this one here has the control panel down the bottom here, your main switch panel, which is your main power switch which isolates all power to the van uh, on items relevant, lights and water pumps, fridges, that side of things. Um, the gauge over here, this is our black water tank, so reading our toilet tank, how full it is in each one by pressing the button here it allows us to see what quantity we have in the tank. The inverter switching here, we need to depress the little red button here and that actually turns on the inverter um, and then the green light is showing that we've got power to our inverter power points located throughout. Turning that back off turns the power off to that. The Vasto heating switch, that one there we just turn the dial, the more we increase the dial that increases the temperature so as we turn that on that actually starts the heater up and then uh, gives us the heat throughout. The water gauge over here gives us a three tank setup in particular in this, this model has got three tanks. So we've got our front tank, our auxiliary tank here, um, our rear tank. This can also be set up that we've got the front and rear tanks without the auxiliary tank, but it might have the grey water tank uh, set up. So the one in the middle there would represent the grey water tank as well, depending on what's uh, purchased in each van. Moving on to the battery management system, we've got five screens that we go through. The five screens is basically giving us an indication on where we are with our uh, battery levels, our power levels for our solar, and our input and our usage throughout. So we've got a home screen, which is what this is set at at the moment there, and this is showing that currently in this particular van we've got it set at 100% capacity on the batteries and it is maintaining uh, the charge in through there at the moment while it's being plugged into the 240. You can actually read down the bottom of each one of these little screens uh, that gives you an indication of looking at charge logs and the like. So if you just follow the prompts on the bottom of the screen and then it can tell you where you've got your charge in the last um, you know, time it was plugged in with power coming through, whether it was on solar, we go to a different one. If we were to hit a button by mistake, we just hit the home key each time. It actually says down the bottom when we're in a different screen uh, to go back. So that takes us back to our home screen. So we can never go too far. If we do, we just hit that back and then start our steps again. The secondary screen there is showing that we've got our power input coming from either the solar is the top line which is white at the moment, the secondary line there which is black is our 240 volt supply and the third line is from our 12 volt system. Uh, that there gives us what we get, we are receiving in, in power wise. So whether we've got uh, solar coming in, it'll show us in what voltage, obviously in the 240 volt and then in the 12 volt as well. If I wanted to look further into the solar side of things, I can actually, it's telling me in the prompt down the bottom, it's going back to the home screen again. Prompt down the bottom there, I click the right button and now I'm looking at the previous day's total of solar power. This is showing very minimal here because we are inside in the showroom, but if we were outside that would increase obviously, as you can see here, the last it was out in the showroom, and then every date that it was, it's previously that you're looking at, you can go quite a distance back on all of that, looking at your solar input from your solar panels that are mounted on the roof. Not including if you were to plug in your own auxiliary solar panel into the front of each trailer, uh, that would obviously increase. I'm in that section, I want to go back out of there, so I press that back arrow. Now I can go to the next screen. This screen here is showing us the actual input of what we're receiving. So at the moment we're plugged into 240 volt, it's coming in through the battery management system. Uh, it is then splitting the power down to the battery to charge as we need a little bit of charge. And currently it's showing up the top here we're using 4.2 amps fluctuating slightly. And that's just saying it's going to a light bulb is the picture, but it's actually representing what power we're using at present uh, throughout the van. So we do have the lights turn on, we've got power to the switchboard and the likes of there. Drop down again, we go back to that. Um, and we can see that it'll fluctuate. So if we turned on more items, um, it is going to actually increase our usage. Uh, the battery is fully charged at the moment, so it won't increase too much on this side of it there, but it's picking up a little bit more because we've now turned on the fridge, so, as you can see. Our next screen there is an important screen on this one on its own. We actually have to change this. At the moment, we're showing that we're in a float mode, a float stage at the top. 
And then we've got a mode which is touring. So this is set up as your basic usage, day to day, traveling and that side of things. You don't do anything with that until you put the van into storage. So if you're storing it at home, or putting it into a, a storage yard, and it's going to sit there for a couple of months or longer, you need to change it from the mode, sorry, I'll just go back to that screen, from the mode of touring to storage mode. So we go down the bottom here again, change mode, we're selecting the arrow to the right. I can now go into storage mode by pressing up or down, into storage, then I'll press the button again. I'm just reading everything off the bottom of the screen. And then from there, if I want to change this into storage mode, I would do what the screen says, and it says to uh, hold and confirm for two seconds, and that's the confirm button, as again, reading at the bottom of the screen. So if I'm confirming that by holding it for two seconds, power's just to, turned off on everything there, apart from the power to this. And now that I've gone into storage mode, it's sitting there ready to just be put away into the shed or wherever. From there though, if we want to change, uh, we pick up the van and we're ready to go away again, we're ready to start using it, we do have to go back in and change that mode. So to be on the home screen again, I've then got to find the screen to go back in and change it from storage back to touring mode. So again, following the prompt down the bottom, pressing that confirm button, down to touring, and now I'm going to confirm it again, pressing that. The power's now come back on and we're now set to travel again with that in the touring mode. Our next screen, and I'll just get out of that. Our next screen there is just our date and time. So we can set our date and time as our home screen, um, or we can have it flicking back onto the other one that we've got there showing our 100% capacity. These here, we can obviously down the bottom again, prompting that if I want to change the date or time, again, I'm going to press these buttons here to change that over and set the settings on that. Simple system to use. You realistically got five screens to look at in those five screens, you can't go wrong, it doesn't matter where you go, I've gone in there, accidentally have hit some extra buttons, so I can just press that button and it's saying back, and I keep pressing that, it'll take me back to the home screen. So it's an easy step to go through, you can't me mess that up, it's more about reading what's in front of you there. The main screens that most people will look at will be this one here, and that one there is our other usage one, and then we go into the changing over to the storage mode from the touring mode when we go to store it. A quick overview of how our battery setups, inverters, diesel heater, this is showing the compartment underneath one of the seats in the dinette area. This unit down here, the black unit with the ducting, that is actually our diesel heater. That's controlled by the actual um, thermostat control knob on the actual main control panel itself. The blue item in the corner there, that's the inverter, so there's a couple of options available in the inverter for different um, setups or usage in capacity wise. Our inverter is a main uh, issue or main question we get asked quite regularly. The inverter is actually on when we turn the switch on on the switch panel, even though we haven't got anything plugged into a power point. So we're actually using power, we're changing our power out of the batteries from 12 volt to 240 volts so that we can use appliances that have to run on 240 volts through the inverter. So even though you haven't got anything plugged into an actual switch, we still are generating power and that is draining our batteries even when the inverter is turned on. So something to be aware of on that side. Uh, this particular one we've got our two AGM batteries. The option there is that you can um, purchase lithium batteries instead of the AGM. The big advantage of that is that we're gaining less weight by going to the lithium batteries. They are a lot lighter. Uh, we do get a longer life out of the lithium batteries in the power wise and we get a hundred percent constant power all the way through. An AGM battery over a period of time drops off in power as it slowly loses charge. So the lithium batteries are a far superior quality battery to have in there. Yes they are a little bit uh, more expensive, but they are more suited, especially if we were to use inverter and use appliances through that side, we can gain that full power all the way through. Our other side over here that we've got, we've got our two fuse um, boards, and our fuses are all labelled individually to each item that's located throughout. So whether we've got our TV outlets, our stereo, diesel heater, uh, water pump, you, um, sockets, that side of things, they're all labelled relevant and the relevant fuses to suit each one. The other big one that's in here that we do talk about is these two items here. These are actually resettable circuit breakers and you'll see up the top there where I'm pointing the two little black dots. If these circuit breakers were to trip, those little black dots will raise and, and sit up a few millimetres 
uh, that will disconnect the power. So to reset those is only a matter of pushing back down on one of those black dots, whichever one is raised, and that will make the circuit complete again, and then we'll have power through. If it was con to continue doing that, we have an obvious problem there that we would need to address from there, but generally it, it might only trip out occasionally in you know, something that's been put in or it's had a little bit of a surge or anything. That circuit breaker could trip, press the button, and we're back in action again. Here in front of us is the spinner cap located inside on the cabinet underneath the dinette setting. By undoing that there, we're taking the cap off, we're now exposing the RCDs. The RCD, commonly known as a safety switch, the same setup as what you have in your house. This is to protect ourselves and the, the unit when we plug in our 240 volt, whether that be from mains power or generator. These are very fine movement on that side when there is a change in voltage or anything quite a dramatic quick change, that will automatically from that position there flick off real quickly. Um, the biggest problem we do have people ringing about in concerning in this is that they're saying I don't have 240 volt power supplied to the van. The reason being, travelling on, it can be on a bitumen road, it can be on a gravel road or it can definitely will be on a corrugated road. These are so fine in their movement that just the continual jarring or movement and that side of things over time, they will flick down like that. The first thing you need to do when you plug in your 240 volt is come in here, remove the cap, come inside and check that it's, if it's down in that position, we reset it by setting it up and we'll be fine with our 240 volt power. If it wasn't to be that side of things, we would look at other options from there, but predominantly you'll find that'll be the first point of call. Uh, by resetting that, you're good to go.